Can you believe it has been about 70 plus weeks since Boku no Hero Academia began? It's just hard to believe when you think about it because this is chapter 70 and we're just 30 chapters away from the big 100 and that's a rarity for a lot of series to actually make it this far. So I'm glad. I, I just want to take a few moments to appreciate how this series has grown from the first chapters to where it has become in this chapter and how it has survived the Shonen Jump cancelization period to where it could possibly just be axed like that. So, I mean, Boku no Hero Academia, seeing it become what it has become, especially with this chapter, very beautiful. So, chapter 70 of Boku no Hero Academia. Once again... All Might giving himself more death flags. It's not like this man already has about 50 to a thousand death flags on his shoulders, but he gets another one and he gives his own self his death flag in this chapter by talking about how he is the shining light or the flame for heroes, children, villains. He is the light for all. He puts that flame in their eyes. And the way he looks up and the way, you know, it was we had this conversation with the detective talking to All Might about, hey, you do realize you can leave the school anytime you want. That That's always an option. That right there, just a lot of death flags. Just a huge death flag for All Might in that one scene. I've said this before and I will say it again. When All Might finally does die, it's going to be fucking sad. Because he, he's such a good character. I've talked about All Might a lot. And I think many can agree that All Might is just a wonderful character. And he has some of the most iconic lines in the series. And then... Seeing how he gets all these death flags, and we're probably going to see him die to the hands of all for one, it, it kind of makes me sad, because I, I can already envision some of the ways that All Might might die in the future. Maybe he's going to be backed up against the wall, and he's going to have a bunch of villains from the Villain Association come after him trying to kill him, and then all of a sudden Izuku has to watch his you know, teacher die in front of him. I, I mean, there's many ways that his death could go. But just with all these constant death flags, like, at the very least, there's a death flag for All Might, like, every three to four chapters. I'm not fucking joking. There, at the very least, is a death flag that much in the series. If not that, at the very least, there is one death flag in each volume of Boku no Hero Academia. Okay, so let's get off that topic. For one, we move over into what Eraserhead was doing with Shinzo. I think that's what his name was. It was the dude that, you know, can mess with you and actually control your body. Well, we also have it to where... Shinzo was mo moving with a racer head in the hallway and kind of ignored Izuku, but that entire scene, there was no dialogue, so we don't really have any clarification of what that was about, but I think it's probably going to lead into some form of events going on maybe in the next arc. After this arc we're currently in, I could see maybe Shinzo having something very important to do in the next arc. Maybe a racer head's bringing him into the class, who the fuck knows? I'm just, you know, kind of wanting to mention that because it seemed very important even though there was no dialogue at all in that part of the chapter so great boy great boy starts eyeing all the girls from class b and a and all that. he's like oh my god so many to choose from and you just see him drooling all over himself I, I i couldn't help but laugh there because as we already saw a couple weeks back with great boy in his development fucking amazing amazing development and seeing him in this chapter when he's looking at all the different girls and stuff he's like so many to choose from i was like what the fuck what the fuck great boy just th this mangaka, the mangaka of Boku no Hero Academia, really must love Great Boy. The way he just acts, and the way he, that the fucking artwork on him when he was just drooling all over himself. I'm like, bro, you're you're too fucking thirsty. You're too fucking thirsty, bro. And I was like, ah, okay, okay, l let's just move on. So the next part to really focus in on is how. Izuku handled himself. We get the aftermath of what happened with Shigaraki and his creepy Joker mentality. Izuku has a conversation with the detective, pretty much talking about all the events that happened when he was pretty much taken as hostage. And the detective pretty much talks to Izuku and saying like, hey, you handled yourself quite well. Even though you didn't capture the dude and stop him, you handled yourself quite well because normal people would have been terrified and the dude probably would have killed the person and then killed everybody else around him. So for Izuku to be able to withstand what Shigaraki was doing to him along with the quick thinking to save everybody else, it goes to show you what type of mindset that Izuku has as well, which we already know he's very intelligent because of his mentality when it comes to him researching into heroes and heroics and stuff, because we get to see another example of this at the end of the chapter with the Pussycat team, and 
Oh my god, I I, I think I'm gonna like this this new team right here. The, these two new girls that was introduced. Like I I think I'm gonna like them. I mean, I also like the little short kid. I wonder what you know his backstory is gonna be about because we saw how the chapter ended off with him. But I'll save that for next week when we get more information. So back onto the pussy cats. You have it to where Izuku's like, oh my god, this is one of the founders and stuff, and he just starts fangasming and the face Ochiko makes to Izuku. I was just like, oh my god, because if you think about what happened these past couple chapters, you remember how Ochiko was thinking about like the romantic relationship between Izuku and her, and then all of a sudden you see it to where Izuku's starting to talk about these other girls. It just looked like Ochiko got a little bit jealous in that scene. Now, I, I don't know if it means that exactly, but still, I just wanted to mention, because that face Ochiko made was pretty damn priceless, and then when you see it to how he's just fangasm, he's like, oh my god, you guys are this, so-and-so this, you, you're known for this. I'm like, bro, Izuku, this is why I love your character so much, because you have a mind, and your attachment to heroics and other heroes and knowing and researching is pretty damn splendid as a main character. So, the Pussycats, what do I think their quirk abilities are? So, if I had to assume, from what we witnessed at the end of this chapter, I'm going to assume that one of the Pussycats, they probably have the ability to manipulate dirt or nature. Like, for instance, maybe rock, stone, sand, and stuff. Maybe something similar to that. Because you do see, like, a bunch of sand and dirt, or, you know, rock, I'm guessing, just move. And it pushes everybody else into the forest. And then after that scene, we see, like, this creature walking around, which is, like, stone. It looks like a golem of some sort. And it makes me wonder if that was actually a creature made by a quark user. Because the forest is called the Mystic Forest of Monsters or whatever. I think that's the exact title. Forgive me if I messed up that title a little bit. But it was a title that was pretty much talking about, like, fantasy creatures and shit. And when you see that type of golem, it suits the theme of what the name of the forest was. But I wonder if it was because of the quark user. For instance, a quark user or being able to make like stone golems or something which would be pretty damn cool and that would mean that I wonder what the limits of that ability are like how many golems could be made or could only one be made how big can they be I mean I'm just curious what type of material can they only be made out of like could they be made out of like you know titanium diamond I'm I'm just very curious about that type of stuff but for now though this chapter of Boku no Hero Academia pretty damn sweet cannot wait to see where it's going to go next week let me know your thoughts in the comments below please be safe chibi out